Christian Church on this first Sunday of Advent, the Sunday of Hope. Please join us in silence as the choir sings our prelude. Come to the first Sunday of Advent, a time of waiting and anticipation for things that have already happened. We know the ending, yet we have to prepare for the beginning. For this season of Advent, we've taken the candle lighting service and altered it just a little bit, including responsive readings, the choir singing, you get to sing a response, which we're going to teach you now. It's printed in your bulletin. It's very simple. When the response comes, I'll just go out like this. So when you see the big arms, that's your turn. It sounds like this. Go ahead and sing with us, please.
best part about this is you don't get to learn it for just one week, but for the next four weeks, it'll be the same response. During Advent, we wait for the one promised in Scripture. And you will be called Wonderful Counselor. We wait for the one who will bring answers to a world filled with questions. And you will be called Wonderful Counselor. We wait for the one who can heal what has been wounded and mend what has been broken. And you will be called Wonderful Counselor. We wait for the one who can renew our weary spirits and ignite our hearts with hope. And in you will be called Wonderful Counselor. Today we light the first candle, the candle of hope, reminding us that Jesus was sent not only to be our Savior, but also to be our wonderful counselor, the one who hears our prayers with compassion and who offers guidance when we seek it. As we begin the season of Advent, we remember that our rest can be found in God and through the gift of God's Son, our hope is forever restored. Please join me in our opening prayer. Gracious Lord, we thank you for your promises and for coming to earth as our wonderful counselor. As we begin our Advent journey, help us to know the abiding hope that comes from knowing that you will keep your promises to us. May we radiate that hope in everything we say and do. 
We pray this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. this morning, either stay up here or come up here. <laughs> the other day when we were decorating, look what somebody left me. They left me two M&Ms. Mm, that's really good. Those are good. Uh, what? Blue. That was blue. 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 Okay. Did you know that the M&Ms tell a, the Christmas story? Did you know that? Let me share it. Let me show you this. That's an M, right? If I turn it that way. Okay. The Bible tells us that the shepherds were tending their flocks by night out on the hillside. And an angel came and appeared to them and said, don't be afraid, for I bring you good news of a great joy. For unto you in the city of David, a Savior is born, who is Christ the Lord. So what did they do? They left, and they went, and where did they find the Christ child? At the manger, with an M. Christmas story doesn't end there. If I turn this, this M and M that way, what letter is that now? Can you see that? No, if I turn it sideways, it's an E. Wise men came from the east, and how many were there? Three. Three. If I turn that M the other way, it's a three. <laughs> and then, when they came to the manger, what did they do? If I turned it upside down, they worshiped the Christ child. So, next time you eat an M&M, &M, remember that that the story of the Christ child is found on an M&M. &M. Now, I'm gonna eat that one, but I do have some for you guys. Uh, Y'all got left out. No, I'm just kidding, hang on. Well, they're Christmas M&Ms, okay? There's two more bags in there somewhere. Joan, help me out. Joan was over there. Joan, did you eat? <laughs> There's supposed to be two more bags of M&Ms. Two more bags. Did they fall down? Okay. There's one. See, I planned it out just right, Fred. I wasn't counting on you being up there. So you're going to have to fight one of these for their M&Ms. <laughs> okay, kids. Go back to your parents now. <laughs> In the life of the community, we have one quilt to pray over today and to tie a knot. The quilt was requested by Kathy Philpott for her friend Dana Jennings. Dana is recovering from a brain aneurysm. Please stop by at the quilt in the narthex and tie a knot and say a prayer for Dana. On Thursday of this week, December 6th at 1130, 
The Shawnee Mission North Choir will perform here in the sanctuary. If you have never heard them, you have missed a wonderful opportunity. So please come Thursday at 1130 and hear this great choir. And then on December 7th at 6 o'clock, please join us for First Friday. Great food and bingo and wonderful festivities. Also, starting on December 7th, nativities from around the world will be displayed in the Fellowship Hall of Overland Park Christian Church. It's a collection of Reverend Martin Colbert, which many of you know. The admission is free, although donations will be accepted. The exhibit is open from 1 to 7 on Friday, 9 to 7 on Saturday, December 8th, and 9 to 1030, and 2 to 4 on Sunday, December 9th. Please join. All are welcome. Please join us for the choir song, prayer song, Like a Child, number 133. <clears throat> As we come to our prayer time, I have an announcement before I start with prayers. Um, last Sunday, I did something that I think, I, I, I'm not sure Trudy can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that was the very first time in all of my years of being a minister that I've ever canceled a church service. <laughs> and so I didn't do that without a lot of thought and without input from uh, at least two other people. And uh, But apparently, some of you may not have gotten that message. And if you came next last Sunday and didn't get that message, I apologize. But if it's bad weather, especially if there's ice involved, if we cancel services, it will be on channel 41, which I'm not sure which channel that is. We're working on getting it on the other channels as well. But for right now, it will be on channel 41. It also will be on my Facebook page. Jim also is gracious enough to send out an email to his Sunday school list and Gabe sends one out to the choir. So hopefully you will know, okay? If you have any doubts, my cell phone number is on the bulletin, it's on the screens, give me a call. I won't sleep in, I promise you. <laughs> what? Well, I guess that's up to them. I would prefer if they stay, but maybe they get extra credit <laughs> later. Yeah. <laughs> so, what? I was thinking about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's right. The Chiefs don't play at noon today, so you got no place else to go anyway. So. <laughs> They don't play at 1230, do they? No, we have plans though. Oh, y'all don't plan, so okay, good. All right, in way of prayer concerns, uh, back several months ago, several, a couple of months ago, I shared with you that our oldest grandson, his sister-in-law was killed in a car accident. They had a little five-year-old boy that was also seriously injured in that accident. And his dad, unfortunate, or maybe fortunately for him, is not in the picture. So at this point, Jonathan and Jessica have temporary custody of Jax. He still is uh, struggling. They, when they got to the, when the paramedics got to the accident scene, he was unresponsive, not breathing, and they did not have a child's intubation tube, so they had to use an adult tube on him, and it seriously damaged his esophagus. So he has had a, a trachea in ever since the accident. Well, this past week. They took him to Children's Hospital in Birmingham, which is connected to Children's Mercy here. 
they operated on him, they took part of two of his ribs and reconstructed his esophagus. Now how they did that, I have no idea, but they did. But he is still sedated. Uh, they want that to heal. They're keeping him sedated on purpose. So uh, for continued strength and healing for, his name is Jax, spelled J-A-X. Oh Lord, hear our prayers. I wrote myself a note so I wouldn't forget this, okay. Uh, Karen Ogden's dad. He's really not doing well at all. Uh, he's been on bed rest for 14 days uh, in the hospital. Uh, this started out as sepsis on October the 2nd, and it mutated and lodged into some metal from a previous back surgery. And that is creating some major problems for him. It, is, it has attacked his nervous system, and he basically right now is a paraplegic. Um, this week they're transferring him to Nottingham Skilled Nursing Unit. They're gonna work on his upper body strength, try to get him to the point to where he can, can transfer himself from a bed to his motorized chair. So we need to keep this family in our prayers. So for strength and healing for the Ogden family. Oh Lord, hear our prayers. And that brings me to one of the other Ogdens that's not related to him at all, but uh, Jerry's sister, uh, Debbie, uh, this past couple of weeks, I guess, uh, she has been diagnosed with endometrial cancer. Um, surgery is coming, but not sure when or where for uh, January the 17th, Shawnee Mission Hospital. Okay, good. So keep Deb in our prayers. This is really worrying her and the family as well. So for peace and comfort and for healing for Deb. Oh Lord, hear our prayers. Um, John also fell. John Cantrell, that he comes and usually sits right back there. Um, he fell four times in two days this past week, and he is in the hospital at Olathe, um, and so they're kind of trying to find out what is going on with him. So for a good report and for strength and healing for John, oh Lord, hear our prayers. Other prayer concerns from our church family. Yes, it is. Good to see you. Almost fifty. Almost 50. <laughs> Good. Karen, I'll get you. Ladies group? Somebody answer that. Oh, no. No, we're not going to do that. But okay. if any of you want to to donate things to the, I'm sure that uh, that they will get put to use. So if you do want to donate, we'll, there'll be a box in the office that you can put things in. Okay, all right, now, prayer request back here, Deb. you guys a new response to positive prayer if I say to you God is good what is your response all the time and then if I say all the time there you go okay so for answered prayers all the time all the time there you go okay Jim yep good great yeah we want to continue to keep Patty in our prayers I know what she's going through, and some of you do too. <laughs> so for continued strength for <coughs> Patty, oh Lord, hear our prayers. Chris?
So for all of those in California who are still uh, struggling with the fire, and for all of those in Alaska who this past week got hit with one major earthquake and then two or three aftershocks, just one right after the other. So for all of those who are affected by these natural disasters, oh Lord, oh Lord hear our prayers. Join me in prayer. Gracious God, we do thank you for the special Sunday of Advent as we start the Advent season with hope. That little four-letter word is so important to our well-being. Without the Christ child, this world has very little hope. But with this tiny child, we have hope, we have love, we have joy, we have peace, all because of this tiny child. You've heard our prayers. We lift each person up to you, knowing, hoping that you will answer those prayers. Strengthen our faith. Help us to listen, to look for those answers. We thank you for your presence here with us. Open our hearts as we learn from you today. We humbly ask these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen.
Turn with me, if you would, in your Bibles to Luke chapter 21. We'll be reading verses 25 through 36. While you're turning there, uh, this will be the last football update until the bowl season starts really later in December and early January. But uh, it was a pretty good day in football yesterday. Georgia got beat. That was a good thing. Tennessee didn't win because they didn't play. South Carolina actually won. So they did play. Um, KU and K-State, neither one lost. So they didn't play either. <laughs> so, well, they played basketball yesterday. And, uh, so uh, interesting day yesterday. Though. And there really weren't any major upsets in any of the conference championship games. So it will be interesting to see what happens on Tuesday. I just am glad that I do not sit on that committee. That would be a tough assignment. Hear God's word. This is Luke's apocalyptic writing. Apocalypse meaning end time, second coming, whatever you want to call it. So hear God's word from Dr. Luke, chapter 21, beginning with verse 25. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among the nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up, raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. So be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And that day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. So when's the reading of God's word, would you pray with me? Gracious God, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart be holy and acceptable to you. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Well, today is the first Sunday of Advent. There are just 23 shopping days left until Christmas. Are you anxious about that yet? How many of you are going to be flying during the Christmas season or having family that's going to be either flying in or driving in? Think back to last weekend and how a blizzard really snarled up transportation. Are you anxious yet? When I worked at the golf course on Kiowa Island, South Carolina, uh, when a resort guest would complain about the weather there, we would jokingly say to them, oh, if you don't like the weather, just stick around for a little while and it'll change. Our reason for saying that was that the weather was constantly changing there on that little barrier island, especially during the spring, summer, and fall months. I always opened the golf course at Turtle Point. I usually left home about 5 o'clock in the morning. As I drove out of the drive, the morning weather report was on, and I firmly believe that that was nothing more than a cassette tape that was stuck in a tape player that just looped day after day after day. It was the same weather report. The weather report for today will have a high of 95 degrees and a low of 90. The humidity will be 90% and 100% chance, 100 chance of showers. It rained almost every day, but at different times, just to keep us on our toes. Now, the weather here, we know, is just much more stable than that. It doesn't change nearly as often. I mean, where else could you live where you have a high on Saturday of 70 degrees and sunshine, and then on Sunday, the very next day, we have a blizzard complete with 40-mile-an-hour winds, six inches of snow, and temperatures that don't break 32 degrees all day. <laughs> Stressed out yet? <laughs> In our scripture reading for today, the author of Luke's Gospel reminds you and me that odd things in nature will begin to happen and that those are signs, signs that we shouldn't miss. There will be signs all over for us to see. But will we see them or will we be simply too anxious to notice? 
what is taking place around us. First, there will be natural signs. The whole cosmos is in an ancient uproar along with the nations who will be confused by the roaring of the seas and the waves. He realized that every year at least two tsunamis occur worldwide. Approximately every 15 years, there is a very destructive, devastating tsunami that occurs. The deadliest tsunami occurred in 2004 in the Indian Ocean. It released the energy equal to 23,000 atomic bombs, the size that was dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Think about that. 23,000 times the energy from those atomic bombs hit from that tsunami. It was the result of a massive 9.0 earthquake that took place on December the 26th, 2004. By the end of the day, more than 150,000 people were either dead or missing, and millions more were homeless in over 11 countries. We have to remember, though, that apocalyptic language is more often symbolic than literal. The reference to the sea, for example, is used throughout the Bible to refer to the prehistoric chaos that was present at the dawn of creation in Genesis 1-2. In the Bible's most famous apocalyptic book, John's Revelation, it is interesting to note that John's vision of the new Jerusalem, the new heaven and the new earth, something very significant is missing. There is no sea. There's no ocean at all, none. We see in the Bible, most of the time, the sea is a metaphor for what? Chaos, chaos, right? I mean, in Genesis 1, God's spirit was hovering over this chaotic body of water that was below. It's just chaotic. If you've ever been out on the ocean, things can change that quick and you can get in a lot of trouble. Now, for Jesus using the stark imagery to describe this chaotic event, world-shaking events that precedes his coming is just a metaphor. Or are they real? They're warnings. They're signs. These events will cause no small amount of anxiety. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heaven will be shaken from verse 26 of our reading to today. That sounds like an eschatological anxiety machine to me where people are found to be freaking out in the face of scary times. It is at this point, Jesus says, that he will be seen coming in a cloud with power and great glory from verse 27. Again, the idea isn't so much to be looking up to anticipate Jesus coming back to take his children home and bring his kingdom to completion once and for all. The idea is to be ready for that coming when it gets here. Jesus borrows the cloud imagery from Daniel 7:13, another apocalyptic vision. And Luke uses the imagery to link Jesus' ascension with his return in Acts 1 through 9, 1 verse 9. Just as the sea represents chaos, clouds represent the glorification of Jesus. But despite all the chaos in the world and all the anxiety it produces, the resurrected and glorified Jesus promises to use his lordship to set the world right once and for all. In the meantime, however, Jesus' people are not to be getting in line for a run through an earthly anxiety machine. Instead, we are to be prepared in advance for the scrutiny and challenges that will come. For Jesus, that means paying attention to the signs and approaching life with faith, not fear. Jesus urges us to stand up, raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing nigh. And then Jesus tells his listeners a story, a parable, a story with a parallel meaning. The fig tree parable reminds his disciples to vigilantly look around for the signs that the kingdom is coming, that Jesus is coming back again. Now, Notice the metaphorical role reverses in the very next verse. It is Jesus' followers who are to be on guard, helping to name and weed out all of the problems, all of the worries that life cause. And all who live on the face of the earth will be affected by these things. 
when we identify and name the fears and anxieties and distractions of the people around us, we can begin to offer hope and help them through a tough journey with Christ. Be alert, says Jesus, and in the process, help others to be alert as well. Are you stressed out yet? Beyond our alertness, Jesus also encourages his disciples and you and me this morning to pray for strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man, verse 36. Some biblical scholars see Jesus' warning here as a reference to the destruction of the Jerusalem temple, which would take place within the lifetime of those listening to him. The reference to this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place from verse 32. And amid impending disaster and anxiety, Jesus urged, urged them to keep their heads up, their knees down, praying for strength, praying for strength to weather the storm and to stand firm in his presence. If our anxiety is setting off alarms everywhere we go, it might be time for us to step back, take a deep breath, and offer a prayer to the Lord who will make all things new from John's Revelation, chapter 21, verse 5. There's no better way to lower your heart rate, your blood pressure, your body temperature, as well as your anxious spirit than slowing down and communing with Christ. Jesus reminds you and me that God is ultimately in charge. The journey, though tough, will end well, and everything will be as good in the end as it was in the beginning of creation. So in closing this morning, let me share with you something that was very important to me growing up. Just in case you have not figured it out yet, winter is my least favorite time of the year. I don't like the mess snow leaves. I don't like to be cold. While I love to hunt, I do not like having to put on so many layers of clothes to go out hunting that I can hardly move. Spring has always been my favorite time of the year. I love to watch the world come alive again after the harshness of winter. Jesus uses a parable of the fig tree to remind his disciples that once that tree puts on leaves, summer's almost there. Where I grew up, there were lots and lots of these little trees called redbud trees. I knew that once those trees turned red, spring was just right there and summer wasn't far behind. It always had such a stark difference to those trees because they were the first ones to turn red when all of the other trees were still bare from losing their leaves. Still to this day, I look for red buds. There's some here, not as many as they are in upstate South Carolina, but they still ensure me that spring is already in progress and that winter is almost over. So on this first Sunday of Advent, we need to be reminded that even though winter is in full swing, there's still hope. Don't let the dark, drab days of winter get you down. Don't lose hope. Spring is coming, and so is the Christ child. There's no need to worry or to be anxious about anything. Because of the birth, the life, the death, the resurrection, and ascension of this Christ child of Christmas, we have hope. One of my favorite songs ever is great as thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness O god my rock there is no shadow of turning with thee thou changest not thou compassions they fail not as thou hast been thou forever will be think about those words to that opening verse we are reminded that god never changes god never turns away from us and god is always compassionate Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Think about those words. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. It never ceases to amaze me what God brings in this world. Every day. One of the things I love about hunting is watching and hearing the world wake up from a long night's sleep. God never ceases to amaze me how merciful he is and how loving he is to us. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. 
Not all we want, not all we want, all we need. And then the final verse. If that verse does not give you hope, there is something seriously wrong with the way you think. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth. Thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with 10,000 beside. No longer are we required to offer up blood sacrifices. All we need to do is ask for forgiveness. Ask God to forgive. And God not only forgives those sins, he removes them as far as the east is from the west. Knowing that we are forgiven, we find an inner peace that all those who live without this Christ child don't have. And once again, we are reassured of God's everlasting presence. There's always things there to cheer us along, to guide our steps, if we will allow God to do so. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. On this Sunday of hope, God's presence, God's compassion and love, God's forgiveness for all our sins brings us to a place where we have hope, bright hope. And to top this off, God gives us blessing after blessing. When the world tries to tell you there's no hope, just remember that God sent the Christ child to this world to bring just that, hope. One day, maybe one day soon, maybe a hundred years from now, that same Christ child will return one final time to take his children home. And there will be a new heaven and a new earth. Strength for today. Bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with 10,000 beside. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Lord and my Savior. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, we do thank you so much for that hope that you give us. Help us on this day of hope to be fully aware of all that you do for us. Help us to share what you give with us with others. Amen. Look at that, can it come forward? He was born to peasants, a humble carpenter's son. Yet there's not another life as influential as this one. He never wrote a book, ran for office, or struck gold, but the simple words he spoke are to this day retold. And if we compare kings, heroes, and celebrities, battles fought, then lost or won, there are none in memory that have changed the world so profoundly, one heart at a time, than the child whose birth we celebrate during this Advent season. As our diaconate collect the morning offering, may we give so that we can share to the community the hope that Christ can give them.
gracious God, we thank you for these gifts given this morning from our hearts. Help us, your children, to use these gifts for your glory right here, right now. Bless both the gift and the giver. In Jesus' holy name, amen. We prepare for communion by singing together, remembering that everyone is invited to this table. Just a few days before Christmas, the tree was up and decorated, the house decked out for the holidays, and Christmas cards were on their way. He'd fussed over the gift selections, fought the crowds, completed his shopping. He should be feeling pretty good, but his heart was troubled as he watched the TV news and read the newspaper. <clears throat> he read of a, a young family struggling to meet ends meet who had their house burned down and all their possessions lost. <clears throat> Someone broke into a local rec center and stole the toys collected for underprivileged children. He remembered the man he'd seen in the street with a sign, we'll work for food. <clears throat> and he wondered what he would do if he'd been in that situation. What kind of a Christmas season is this, he thought. How can God let these things happen? Why, don't he, why doesn't he do something? Does he really care anyway? He was still troubled as he went to bed. Why didn't God do something? <clears throat> as he tossed and turned, an idea began to take shape. It just might work, he thought. If God doesn't care, I do, and I can do something. The next morning, he called the banker and the reporter who'd written the story about the fire. That evening, the paper carried the story of a special fund established by the bank to help the family and the overwhelming response they'd received. He called the outreach chairman of the church who organized a calling campaign that replaced the stolen toys in two days. <coughs> the next morning, the man with the sign showed up at his office, ready to work in response to a good meal and an invitation to a job that might be for him. That night he felt better, but still troubled by the problems in the world around him. As he again wondered why God didn't do something, he became aware of a warm feeling he felt in the room. <coughs> and he felt, rather than heard, the answer to his question. I did do something. I sent you. <coughs> I sent you. Each Christmas, we rejoice in God's love and the gift of Jesus he gave us so many years ago. As we gather at his table this morning, let us each give him a gift of ourselves by reaching out to share our time, our resources, and our love with those around us. Let us each speak out and declare 
Here I am, Lord, send me. Not just at Christmas, but throughout the year. So we pray. The word Advent comes from a Latin word means coming. His purpose is to look forward to the coming of Christ to earth. It was a season that focused on waiting. So Advent means something new is coming. The dawn of new and better air. This is really what Christmas season is all about, isn't it? It's a celebration of the advent of a new era. God broke into time and space and entered our world. Long expected Jesus, you, you have come and you are coming again. You are the desire of every nation. You're the joy of every longing heart. By all significant merit, you have raised us and you will raise us up again. So very amen. So very, amen, we pray with gratitude and anticipation in your loving name. Amen. We are the Christian Church Disciples of Christ, a movement for wholeness in a fragmented world. As part of the one body of Christ, all are welcome at this table as God has welcomed us. For it was on that night so long ago when Jesus gave himself up for you, for me, he took bread, he blessed it. He broke it. He said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the meal, he took the cup, the third cup, the cup of redemption. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant, my blood poured out just for you. Drink from it, all of you. For as often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim his death until he comes once again.
Would you join me in our prayer of dedication? Loving God, we thank you that you have fed us in this sacrament and united us with Christ. Through Christ Jesus we pray. Amen. You may be here this morning having never accepted Christ as your Savior. You may be here seeking a new church home. I would invite you to come as we stand and sing How Great Our Joy, page 170, we'll sing the first verse. seated just for one minute. Miss Mary, would you come back up here, please? Miss Mary has been singing in the choir and attending Sunday school class and different things, and she comes this morning to become an official member of our family. So, Mary, I ask you the question I ask everyone. Do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, your own personal Savior and Lord of your life? I do. All righty, then I will ask you to join me at the back when we have prayer, and then everyone can officially welcome you to our family. Now, one more thing. Sometimes we acknowledge certain people's birthdays. I don't want to leave anybody out. So what we're going to start doing is the first Sunday of every month is birthday Sunday. Okay? So if you have a birthday in December, Otis Sanders, where are you? Doesn't Otis have a birthday? Or is it Barb? Barb. Oh, it's Barb. Okay, Terry, Jerry, y'all stand up. Everybody that has a birthday in December. And Carol and Judy who are gone. Okay, great. Let's sing happy birthday. Let's sing happy birthday. God bless you. There you go. Great. Now, let's all stand for our closing prayer. And please welcome Mary to our church family. Gracious God, we do thank you for Mary as she comes to become a part of this church. Help us to be to her the church family that she needs. Help her to be to this church an active and meaningful part, sharing your love, spreading your love. We thank you for today, for all of the blessings that you give us. Watch over us as we part and go our separate ways. Keep us safe above all this week. Help each one of us to live our lives in such a way that other people will truly see you in us. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.